Hi, this is Danai, and as you can tell, I'm in Greece right now. The Mollybos International Music Festival, which is a festival that I founded together with my sister five years ago, just came to an end. And I thought it might be interesting for you to get a little look behind the scenes of the festival and how things work. So I decided to upload an interview that my sister and I did about how exactly everything works, how we do the artistic planning, because she and I are the artistic directors and invite all the artists and create all the programs together. So I decided to upload an interview where we answer all these questions about how we invite people, how we create the programs and how it all started five years ago and how the journey was until today. So I hope you enjoy. So when we started the festival, it was all basically just a try in the beginning. So we did everything by ourselves. We didn't have a big team. We had a couple of volunteers that were helping us and we invited our friends and just hoped that it would be a nice summer. And then quite unexpectedly to us actually, it grew very quickly and our team became much bigger. We started really focusing on the artistic side of things and many other people also came into this group of people. And now we're at a point five years later where our musician friends come here regularly and many even ask us to come to Monibos, which for us is of course amazing because we want to bring all the amazing people out there here and show them this place and make music together. So it really is a big joy for us where this festival has come in those five years. And I think another thing that we really, really love and that we're so proud of is that when we started the festival, definitely one of our dreams and goals and motivations was that the place, Monibos, that we loved so much because we had been coming here every summer since we were babies and little children and had, had wonderful memories at the castle and we had this dream to connect that with the other love of our lives, which was <laughs> music and performing and, and then playing chamber music together with our other musician friends and to bring this art form that we loved to this place. And from the first year it was really so wonderful to see how the um, people of Monibos embraced the festival and loved coming to the concerts and were so happy to be able to, to, to witness these things that of course we sort of had witnessed for a very long time when we were from in Germany and um, that for us of course is very touching after a concert to see someone coming up to you and saying thank you it's so wonderful to have experienced this and um, of course that is something that keeps motivating us, to, uh, motivating us to really get back at it and you know, go through all the potential little difficulties that could happen. And also in the past we just came here for the summers, for a holiday, and now a very nice side effect of the festival is that we come here much more often. We do our education programs throughout the years, which is, has become a completely separate branch of the festival where we work with little kids in schools, and we just love coming here as often as we can. So it's a very positive experience. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that when you have a festival, the festival kind of is its musicians and the musicians that are there, especially a chamber music festival like the one that we do here where we don't have finished programs or ensembles that come and play, but we all meet here for an incredibly intense week. We rehearse all day, we spend the whole day together and then we play on stage together and in formations that we usually don't have, so we all have to be very open and really have to react well and feel very comfortable on stage with each other. So when we choose the musicians that play here, we don't only choose musicians that play incredibly, because there are many musicians that play incredibly, but also musicians that we feel really work together on a, on a human friendship level. And very often exactly these musicians are the ones that are open, that are reactive, that um, are very reflective of music, of life in general, and I think this is what really makes out the group dynamic of this festival. Um, because I think when you're on stage, what you share with the other musicians is something incredibly intimate, maybe even one of the most intimate things that you can share. And when you look into someone's eyes in a certain moment of music, especially chamber music, it says so much, it's like sometimes you look directly into their soul and you don't want to do that with someone you don't feel comfortable with or someone that annoys you or has some, a, a diva attitude or something like that. So we really have to say every person that comes here is the complete opposite of that and we have some 
huge, hugely successful musicians, and when they're here, they're just the humblest people ever, and just do it for the sake of music, because that's what they are in the end. They're not superstars, but just musicians, and this is what we really, really love about them. And I think also what you say is true for, for most festivals, but also what is even more extreme in this festival is that the situations that we perform in are also quite extreme. I mean, in the castle with wind and, and the nature, <laughs> just around us and, and sometimes supporting us but sometimes also challenging us and, and, and the scores that we sort of like all try to you know help each other to make the, the, the performance of course as comfortable as possible which means that it, it, it gets so intimate so quickly and um, of course we are also on a Greek island which means that the nightlife is fantastic. So um, <laughs> they cannot get away. <laughs> and therefore, there is that component as well. I mean, we eat twice a day copious amounts of incredible food. <laughs> and then we go dancing together and yeah, we go to the beach. Yeah. And we, we connect on so many levels. So even the, the musicians that we invite, that maybe we invite on recommendations, um, after like day number two, they're completely part of the of the core family. It was so funny. After I think the second festival, we developed this um, WhatsApp group called in the German Der Hat Molivos Kern, which is like the, the Molivos core, which were like just so many people of the festival that also stayed afterwards for holidays and everything. So I think the reason why it's so much more that sentiment of family is because everything that we experience here brings us to the extremes of any possible direction you can imagine. So um, we always try to look for a theme that we're very passionate about and not only on a musical level but especially something that is important to us on a human level and something that we see fits into these times. So um, especially with everything going on in the world and, and all the tensions that might be coming up, um, we really believe that dialogue is sort of a, a core thing that we all need to, to focus on, and especially good dialogue, dialogue that goes from thesis and antithesis, which isn't a bad thing if like, there are contradictory opinions, and that, but, but then we, we learn how to go from that place to actual synthesis, to um, grow our opinions, and of course, in turn, grow our friendships, the society, democracy, the countries, everything. So um, that was sort of the... the idea of the, of the theme on the human and the more societal level. And of course, on the other hand, dialogue is the foundation of chamber music anyways, but music everywhere. I mean, there is no um, classical music without different ideas clashing together, forming new ideas, and getting into uh, an incredible conclusion from which we can learn so much. And um, we were saying in the concert yesterday that these really these chamber music pieces that we all love and that um, we all love performing again and again and again. The reason why they never get old and they are so timeless is because they are full of philosophy and full of psychology and um, the performers, us and also the audience can learn so much from sort of the, the message that is hidden inside the music. And actually dialogue is also very reflective of the spirit of this festival because when we choose the theme we send it to the musicians and we ask them yeah what, what are your suggestions what would you like to play and it's very much a dialogue to the creation of the whole artistic program it's not at all just us putting in our ideas so um, just this time as well we sent it to them and we asked them what they would like to play and it is so amazing to see that these musicians that are here really give us so much input and so many great ideas because the repertoire that we play here some parts of it we didn't we didn't know it before they suggested it, especially for percussion, for example, or certain wind instrument repertoire. Um, we also get to learn and get to know, and this is also another part of the dialogue that is very essential and really characterizes the the process of this festival. And for sure, another thing that we are so thankful to the musicians that come here is that. There are really some things that we try here that are out of the ordinary and definitely not something that you encounter in your everyday life as a musician, like the MMMs, the concerts, that, the little concerts that are being played. 
on the beach or at the harbor or on the street in front of a certain shop. And, and we are so grateful that not only do they accept it, but they totally embrace that sentiment and um, are totally up for connecting with the local people here and connecting with the atmosphere here. And that is really, I think, what makes this whole event so special, that there is a real symbiosis between things that actually don't meet that much, but when they do, it just makes things so much better. And I think there's actually even a, a much bigger layer to it than just the artistic side of the musicians, because also with the audience, mm -hmm. I mean, it's the audience that we also ask a lot of um, with the pieces that we program, that sometimes even in big cities with big classical musicals are not being programmed because they are afraid that the audience might not like it because it's too risky or too experimental. And here the audience is incredibly open to it. So um, it's not only the musicians that we go into a dialogue with, but we enter a dialogue with the audience, with this entire place. And I think it's what one has to think about is when a composer writes a piece, he first goes into his little internal dialogue and writes out a piece of music, then the, the person that plays the interpretation, so the, us, the musicians, come and ha have our own little form of dialogue. And then the audience is the next component and changes the piece again, because the piece changes from performance to performance. So it really is dialogue on every level. And I think that that is also um, why we think that music is such an art in general, is such a good avenue to get into a dialogue for more difficult um, subjects that maybe don't have to do anything with art because in a way what I always think is if it makes so much sense in music to see that things that shouldn't fit together do, they can fit together if you put the emotional effort into it then it works in other levels as well.